episode 346 of global from asia.com <laughs> we're still a dot com but we're still talking about the decentralized internet we got the ceo of namebase.io tashun it's an, a great one honestly i just finished it we're jamming this into his three-part series of handshake and dweb in the global from asia show let's tune in Welcome to the Global From Asia podcast, where the daunting process of running an international business is broken down into straight up actionable advice. And now your host, Michael Michelini. Thank you everybody for choosing to download and listen or stream. You know, I I do these interviews and the guests always say, is this audio or video? I'm like, well, we're kind of audio, but video, looking at myself here in the same desk man i don't know how many i barely left the city block in like at least a half a year (laughs) what a but i mean i think like i say in the interview today maybe it's been a positive for the decentralized web the internet the crypto space you know and uh, this is part i would say part three of a three-part series maybe we'll do more but we got this kind of weekly through role of handshake or decentralized web or d-web or the new web or web three or make the internet great again is kind of what i've been saying <laughs> but we have the ceo of namebase tia shun and uh, this show will be on globalformasia.com slash namebase slash namebase they are a private company uh, a lot of people think they are handshake themselves they've been holding the torch though for sure i mean they deserve that they, they work really hard i mean that's how i got into Na- handshake and hns um, and most of us have i talk about that also in the interview it's a fascinating discussion i know some of you amazon sellers or b2b traders might not totally understand this you know i know Gautier and our GFA VIP memberships like, oh, Mike getting into crypto again. But I believe it's bigger than crypto. You know, it's the it's the internet. It's not about getting your Amazon account shut down, your Facebook page, your ad account, you know, your Google deranking, you know, all this stuff. And this is about giving the individual, giving the creator the power, not these small group of internet companies give them the power over us you know i'm afraid of being scared and waking up if my amazon account's gonna get shut down if my google account's gonna get adsense account my associates account my seller account my facebook page my profile like i'm tired of this fear you know and i know a lot of you have it and that's kind of what's gotten me into this so let's go into the interview after that uh, I'll rant some more, but I don't want to take over this whole introduction. I want to get into our amazing interview with the founder, uh, co-founder and CEO of Namebase.io, how they got, how he got in, what's the story, what's the future, and, uh, and some other inside stories. Let's tune in. We have a membership. We have a paid membership, if you guys know that. Our team is doing some little bit of promotion. We're actually kind of including some of our internet marketing services, our content creation services with our GFA VIP membership. If you enjoy what you see and you want to support us, and you want to get on the inside, get into some mastermind calls, get into some private access to our forum, which is not too active, honestly, but we have courses and we have amazing people in here that really want to help you succeed in your global business. Hope to see you there. GFA VIP dot all right thanks everybody for another global from asia podcast this is the third part of a three-part mini series about handshake and the decentralized internet and he's been on my list for a while we have the ceo and co-founder of namebase tian shun roger thank you so much for coming on the show thanks for making it thanks for having me mike yeah it's a pleasure and i know you've been super busy i mean like uh yes we passed one year mark for for the handshake blockchain and and things have been really picking up and name base has been growing by leaps and brown leaps and bounds so i appreciate your time here today so i just before we get into it i just want to give a little bit of an intro some of your story honestly when i first heard about you know handshake and name base you were one of the first people that was mentioned to me about it and you've been doing amazing things in 2014 you left boston to san francisco to join teespring as an engineer while you were a junior in high school and then you dropped out and then you basically started another company called Strong Intro for helping engineer engineering teams grow through referrals. You went through Y Combinator for Strong Intro. And then in 2016, you were an undergrad at MIT doing math and computer science. But then in 2018, you dropped out of MIT to start Namebase. And in a couple of years ago now, 2019, you got a grant from the 
Theo Foundation for Name Base. So man, that's an amazing, amazing little intro background. You've been really making moves the last few years and it's, it's, uh, it's amazing. Thanks, Mike. Yeah, it's been a, it's been a fun ride. <laughs> for sure, dude. For sure, man. So I guess, I guess there's a lot in that. We could do a whole interview with that story, but I guess we're going to focus more on the decentralized internet and handshake and name base today. I guess where in that time frame did you hear about handshake? You know, I'm curious to, to yeah, know it first. Yeah, it was about 2018, early 2018, or maybe around May, but it was Eric Meltzer, uh, who goes by Weep Pond online. He shared the handshake white paper with Anthony and myself. And, awesome. you know, Anthony and I both come from engineering backgrounds. We met at MIT. And just based on kind of our technical background, we got very, very excited about Handshake because we you know, are familiar with DNS, we interacted with it and used it. And we kind of just realized that it could provide a step function improvement in terms of just the underlying infrastructure. You know, it makes the names more secure, more censorship resistant, you know, truly ownable by end users. And it really makes the entire system just permissionless, which I think is really important for unlocking innovation. And then on top of that, we also looked at some of the mechanics around the tokens and the distribution. You know, for example, they limited the name rollout so that early adopters couldn't just squat all the good names, right? That's why a lot of people had to wait to bid on some of the names that they wanted to get. They did a airdrop to developers that was really clever. And so, you know, from our perspective, both the technical infrastructure and also the go-to-market was very uh, well thought out. You know, of course, there were things that could have been improved and in retrospect, things that maybe should have been done differently, but overall, it was very well done. And so we kind of built conviction around it. And we also realized just in in terms of adoption, it would need to have an easy way for people to go and use it at the end of the day, right? Because even developers don't really like funky software and command line interfaces. So that's why we ended up building Namebase to make it really easy to use Handshake. But it all started with us kind of building conviction around it after reading the white paper. Very exciting. I didn't know. So yeah, we pond. I've chatted to him a little bit on Twitter. And yeah, he I think he has the name Eric, E-R-I-C, I believe. And he changed his Twitter name like a lot of us to our handshake names, which is which is great. And I think that's a, that's an amazing story. I mean, I, I feel similar how I heard of, I I mean, I'm only heard about it October 2020, so much later than that. But when I heard about it, I, f- I feel the same, you know, that it is they the 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 people that started handshake really did think about it very strategically and long-term and the squatter problem has been at least solved by breaking it out over that first year. Like even me, I was October and it wasn't yet all released and there was names I wanted that I couldn't get. And, and even after the one year, I mean, people still have to do this five-day auction if they find a name, right? They can't just squat, buy them all. They have to, to, to let them sit there for five days and let other people see them and, and bid on them too. So it's really, it's really great. And uh, yeah, totally. Mike, I mean, I, I, I don't think I've actually heard your personal story in terms of how you discovered Handshake. So yeah, it is appropriate should... to hear it here. Otherwise, sure. <laughs> I guess I haven't shared it. I, I haven't really shared it in these, in the show. I mean, basically a friend of mine, Chris, Chris Moore, he's not as high profile as, as, as we are, you know, he's an American in Hong Kong and he's in the internet space and a marketer, like kind of like me. And he's like, Hey, check this thing. You know, I think it was maybe even September, October, and he heard about it. He's in a domain space. So I think he heard mm-hmm. about it from NamesCon. And then he heard about mm-hmm. it another yeah. time from some podcasts. And then honestly, I was a little bit, I'll have to say, I was a little bit hesitant. He's like, oh, because there are other projects, like you said, uh, you know, that there's others that have tried to solve this problem of, of names on the internet and yeah. Um, numerous times there's yeah. other ones so i was like oh, another one and then i'm gonna have to start to spend money and hope that these things are worth something or i can use them someday but then he was like he stayed on me he gifted me a name actually he's he gifted me sky include that's my first name oh no way oh i love that yeah he gifted it to me so and then i was like you know what i'm gonna try to not buy any other names but i did but at the beginning i was like i don't want to i'm just gonna build this one you know that was the idea it's just build one yeah. And that's why I started making the videos. Like I think the first YouTube on Sky Include was like October and like I think mm-hmm. Halloween. And then I was kind of shy to put it out. And then I didn't want to confuse it with Global From Asia, this podcast, because I felt like it wasn't exactly related. So I was like, started this new channel. And mm-hmm. yeah, I mean, Johnny, I connected with Johnny on a call. Johnny Wu, you, you're, you're so blessed to have him, man. He, 
you know, he's amazing uh, community guy at main base and it doesn't make yeah, things so great. He uh, super welcoming to the community and me and I had a call with them and then I got hooked on. Yeah. And then I'm like, okay, maybe this other name would be a good one. And then, you know, I think I, I picked up mastermind. I picked up like a bartender because I do the bar products on e-commerce. Oh, wow. Those are great names. Those are valuable names. That's yeah. Awesome. I mean, and I've been thinking about how to integrate those into the, into the Amazon space for some of the listeners today that are in Amazon or e-commerce mm-hmm. for, for that. But that's my quick story. Basically a friend told me and then I got it sucked in and then I felt like there's got to be more content about it. You know, that's why, that's yeah. why I started making these videos. It's like all these developers tell me these complicated things and there's this amazing stuff in these discords and amazing stuff in these telegram groups. But I'm like, I can't, I can't really find it and make it an easy way, but that's my quick, quicker story. So yeah, I love that. I love that you first got your name through gifts. You know, it's, yeah, it's so funny it. because when we, when we released that feature, we were always like, oh, you know, like, I wonder, are people going to use this? Like how, how valuable will it actually be? And then now there is this entire, you know, gifting culture from the community. Yeah. And I think that's, that's actually so important because a lot of people, they see this decentralized name space and they're like, oh, like the first thing people think about is like, oh, like squatters, right? Like that's, yeah. that's kind of like a common complaint. And it's like, oh no, actually in the handshake community, there's a huge gifting culture. And yeah. a lot of people actually, you know, Hatchet Jesus has been going out and getting yeah, really, really valuable names who don't use it. Yeah. So I think that's like, it, it's so lovely to see that that feature was just taken and yeah. being used to actually grow the community in such a healthy way. It's, it's, it, it ultimately will increase the pie for everyone. So um, that's been amazing. Yeah, I totally agree. And then I literally just helped gift one to Paris um, on Twitter, um, blanking on her name. I'm sorry, but somebody in the Discord is like, can somebody reach... Not Paris Hilton. That would be pretty cool. Paris, <laughs> she's, an, she's an angel investor in, in NFTs. Let me... Oh, cool. Uh, I have to get it now while I talk, but... Terry, Terry Cruz was just saying that he'll, he's going to accept his gift. So I think the auction that just finished. I don't know if you saw that on Twitter. So it seems like some celebrities are getting their hands awesome. now as well. Yeah, Paris Ruzati, Rosati, R-O-U-Z-A-T-I. So I, I commented on one of her tweets... Uh, I think she was talking about Handshake. And then I said, hey, did you know we have Paris Rosati and Rosati, her last, her family name, for free? I, we can gift you. We want to make sure you get it. And she she didn't believe it. She's like, really? Like some emoji, kind of confused emoji or something, you know, <laughs> talk about. Yeah, movie. yeah. And then I was like, yeah, I totally oh, agree. I She's like, what's the catch or what's the scam or what's, you know, especially obviously there's some scammers out there, you know, so I, so I went to DM, but I just said, give me your email, which is a little bit of an ask though, right? A stranger has to get your email. That's the one kind of permission, but, but then she already had an eBay's account and then she's so happy. I mean, it felt really good too. I was just like, you know, like, wow, thank you. But it totally helped this for sure. But that's how I got my first yeah, sky include. And it's also, it was like, it was only a uh, two H and S I think something like that <laughs> if you look it up oh wow that's amazing yeah so but yeah that's that's what's re- it's definitely helped for sure it's helped the community with the gifting i mean i think that also gets people over the hump of like oh you're gonna make me buy some kind of token that's new you're gonna try to make me like open an account and then start auctioning but no the gift definitely helps because then he just sent it to me i get an email you know we created an account and then i uh, could use it right no coin needed no mm. no no requirements so it's definitely the, my story and I think a lot of others. So let's just look at my little outline. Kind of covered a few in there. But yeah, honestly, I really appreciate Namebase. I know you guys get a lot of pressure because you kind of, there's others, there's other options. Some people even think you are Handshake, which almost you kind of deserve it because you, the Handshake founders, you know, they they started it, but then they they kind of did another uh, Satoshi or they, 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 they're not involved, right? So if... <laughs> Like you had said in your your last response, you know, if I had to use like one of these CLI clients or some kind of a cold wallet at the beginning, and I had I, like yeah, Namebase makes it so easy, right? So a lot of people say in the community you're you're doing what like Coinbase is doing, and, and kind of like a, a GoDaddy in one for people. Like I bought my first domain on GoDaddy in 1999. I had oh, no wow. idea how to buy a domain really? name. Yeah, I bought my full name actually, Michael Michelini. Somebody. Somebody's like, you got to get your name. You got to get your name, you know? And then I was literally working at a .com, Cosmo.com in New York City. And then mm-hmm. I was like, 
where? And they're like, just go to godaddy.com. And I went there and I searched my name, my full name, Michael Michelini, and I just registered it summer 1999. And I was like, just holding, you know, I didn't know how to use it. And I'm, but anyways, similar story. I think a lot of people register their names to start, whether it's traditional yeah. domains or, or, you know, this decentralized internet. I love that story. Cause you know, a lot of, a lot of the handshake community members are people who kind of have experience with, you know, have experienced the growth of the original internet and they were really early in, right? Like even like Andrew Rosner or some of these other domainers and they kind of saw this story play out before, right? It was like, they kind of got in, they heard about it early. They just like got a few names and then they just saw this entire ecosystem grow up around them. So that's why a lot of the community members were basically people who have that background because they kind of see it happening, you know, history repeating itself. And then they're kind of getting into it because they have that knowledge and, and history. So it's really funny that you kind of also have that experience just getting into uh, dot coms back in 1999. Yeah, it's true. I mean, it, everybody was was um, not really sure what to expect, but we felt like you need your name, you know, make a homepage, put your like resume, put, you know, put your contact information. So that was, it was going around in the office, you know, I, I was sitting in my cubicle and got on my on a computer at work in the office and just registered. But yeah, I mean, so so name bases totally should be commended for allowing because I could I, I was thinking about over the last few months. I mean, if if there wasn't a name base, I think you know you talk about squatters. There would have been just a few really smart developers that got in early, even if it was over a year. They would have just waited every week and picked them up for like a few H and S each, probably. You know, I mean, I feel like if most people had to figure out all the tr- those other tools that it would be just a much smaller, smaller, you know, ecosystem and, and bidding auctions, you know? Yeah, definitely. Definitely. You know, I, I think what I'm seeing from our position at Namebase is really, really early on when the community was so small and fragile, you know, people would really wouldn't have gone into Handshake if they didn't have some sort of interface that made it easy for them. And you would have exactly had that problem of, you know, just a, one or two developers able to get all the good names because they can just go and bid on everything and you're not going to have like normal people with there are a lot of people who have a lot of money that they go and bid on names but they're not technical right so like they wouldn't just have participated in handshake at all without some sort of convenient interface so we just had very little competition and the names have been squatted up and then now there's literally zero reason for anyone to go and adopt handshake and use it and that's that's the that's the problem that's you know plague name coin and some of these other uh, previous attempts is you kind of have that squatter problem so that's definitely the, the case in the initial, you know, like first year. Now, as we grow, the really th- the thing that's really exciting to me is the community is growing up around us and it's growing so fast as like getting to the point where we can't even keep pace yet. I would say it's, it's not quite there. It still feels like kind of we're, we're pushing and we're pushing, but it's starting to feel like now that the wind's kind of catching at the sails. And, you know, what I'm excited for is for the entire ecosystem to, so, to grow so big. It's just like, wow, there's like literally no single company or organization or individual can just keep track of it all. That's really when we know that Handshake's, you know, going to win for sure. Like at that point, it's just like, it's an unstoppable force. Right now it's like almost there. And it's just like, if the entire community pushes like a little bit more, it'll just kind of fall further so much and get get so much momentum that we're not even going to be able to keep up. And like, that's really what we want to do, right? Like, you know, ultimately we want this thing to grow so much that we are just like a small player in a massive pond. That's not quite the case yet, but it will be the case if the momentum continues and the community keeps on pushing. So like stuff that you're doing is incredible. HandyCon is incredible. You know, all this work from the community members is, is incredible. It's ultimately going to be what results in Handshake succeeding. Agreed. You know, and some other signals, it's the developer community. Like I mentioned before the recording, there's like two search engines now that I know of at least. And they're... I, HNS search guy, he's such a friendly guy, Andy, and he's in Switzerland. And I don't know if you know how he start. He got in. I was talking to him. Actually, I don't know how he found out about Handshake, but I, I talked to him privately. I said, how do you fund this? You know, is there something, you know, because there's also more in, investment groups or funds or agent trying to support this. I know there's a foundation that you're, you're, you're involved mm-hmm. Then that will be announced more s- soon. But I said, you know, maybe I could help because that's what I like to do. Maybe I can introduce you to somebody, help you get some funding. He's like, yeah. he's doing it all by himself. And he says, you know how he some funds it? Flipping names. He buys names and he sells them. Oh, no way. So, yeah. So he says he makes enough buying and selling to, to fund it, which kind of almost goes against what a lot of these, the critics of, you know, like squatting or flipping because yeah, he's flipping and doing it, you but know. he's doing it to fund building. 
You know what I mean? Yeah. Like he's building yeah. from that. It's not like he's just collecting money. Totally. He's building. You you know the thing that I've also realized in running name base and getting to speak with so many people, like the domainers like Andrew Rosner as well and, and other ones like Mike and whatnot, is you know, also I come from an engineering background. So when we started name base, we were really like anti squatter. We're really anti collector and we're like, oh squat and cerebral, like that's you know, like we hate that. Right, because we've all dealt with that in the traditional domain world. But the thing is, it's domain flippers are not the issue. It's it's squatters that are the issue, right? When people will get a name and it's like, oh, like I'm squatting on, you know, like global from Asia, right? And yeah, I'm, I'm squatting yeah. on that, and I'm getting that, and I'm not going to sell it. And like, there's only one person in the world who wants that, and it's you know Mike McLean, yeah, I know, from, from Asia, and they're yeah. squatting like that. That sucks, right? So like, we we hate that, and you know, I, I think a great it's a great thing in the community that we have this gifting culture because that's really important. However, the uh, domain flippers are actually super important because those people bring money and liquidity into liquidity, the system. Yeah. You know, if someone who's selling a lot of domains, that's a great thing because that means that they're getting domains into the hands of people who actually go and do something with those names or it actually matters enough for them for them to you know, pay out and do something with it. You, the issue you want to avoid is people being able to get a name that's valuable as such a low cost basis that they can just hold on to that forever and not do anything with it. And with handshake, that's a little bit easier, right? Because you have to submit a heartbeat transaction every two years, but the transact, like you don't even need a mining fee. You can technically do zero, but you, you know, even if you want to do it at the current, like traditional mining rate of like is 0.98 HNS, that's like literally three cents or a few cents. So you actually have this issue where people are just being able to get names and hold on to them forever and they don't care about them and they're not selling them. That's bad for the ecosystem. You want more and more people to be getting these names and building things on top of the names. And the domain flippers are uh, people who bring liquidity into the ecosystem. So they're, they're actually, it's kind of, a, there's a difference between flippers and the squatters and people kind of confuse the two together. Yeah. Uh, and it is kind of an unfortunate misconception because the, you know, like, like you said, the, this guy doing HNS search, great work. He's flipping his names to fund himself and that actually improves the ecosystem. Uh, yep. along many dimensions. So um, I comm- commendable, very commendable. Yeah. I mean, I don't know if you'd agree with me, but I almost feel like that's like, almost like another level of mining because there's the mining, the traditional, which people could ro- mine H and S, but this is a, it's almost like another level because I've noticed there's this ecosystem already of people that don't want to bother with auctions. There's people that just buy full price. Eve, I've seen it where yeah. even it recently just came out of reveal, but they pay like a massive premium on top of the price. I just feel like maybe this person doesn't want to be bothered with auctions. Maybe they just, so in a way it's almost like they're a mine in my mind, at least they're like a miner because they're spending time bidding, opening, following, you know, whereas I think there's another level of person. that's just like, I'll pay a premium and I'll just buy it for like, you know, aftermarket price. Yeah. So. Yeah, totally. Like there's, I, I completely agree with you. It's like a proof of work. Almost. If you go and put in the effort and get a name and spend the two weeks, to get a name and then you sell it at like a you know premium the person buying that values that time right yeah, it's like it's you know, no, no one people value their time you think about how much time and effort it actually takes to get some of these names it's like paying you know if you value yourself like 50 dollars an hour it can take like a few hours to actually go and get the name of, of just like focus effort so if you just like value that that alone accounts for like a really healthy premium for most most of these names so i, I think it's a really great practice you have people who have time on their hands they can go and get the names quickly over a period of time. And then they can sell the names to someone who wants to purchase it quickly. And that's very healthy for the ecosystem. Yeah, agreed. And there's one point I kind of would like to hear the insights. I mean, we're in COVID. We're still, I, I, I don't know how it is in San Francisco, but it's still somewhat locked down and in, in we're uh, not total lockdown, but basically still most of us are like kind of like locked down or not definitely not traveling as much as before. So Honestly, I was talking actually my friend Chris and some others. We think that actually was a positive for Handshake or even the crypto space because people had time to study and learn. And and I feel like it was somewhat, I, would, I don't know if you'd agree or thought of that, but you guys, the, the, the blockchain opened like right as the world shut down, right? I, I think, what was the timing yeah, of that? Yeah, February, February 2020 is when it launched. Yeah, we launched yeah. the same day that Handshake launched, so. It was actually really funny to see because that first month, it was just insane growth because, you know, the first month of any cryptocurrency that launches, you just get a lot of speculation. And then when Bitcoin dropped, um, like 
usage across the board. It was, it was speculation across the board just dropped as well with it. And then we slowly built up from there. And then now you're seeing, you know, like the marketplace activity grow exponentially and, and the users grow and everything like that. So we kind of got to see that like initial speculative phase and then like the, the trial sorrow and then the actual utility grow and grow. I would agree with you though. I do think that ultimately COVID made the internet a lot more, the digital world just like a lot more important in True. everyone's lives. True. Um, you know, it probably accelerated that trend by a decade, right? That's yeah. kind of the consensus is that it accelerated. If you just look at like e-commerce, it accelerated e-commerce's share of all commerce. If you like look at their past 10 years of growth, it literally just like jumped 10 years, which is just insane for that to happen in one year. So I do think that ultimately it was a good thing for Handshake. And then also if you're just looking at everything else happening in the internet today, you know, all the issues with censorship, right? Trump getting deplatformed, yeah, Parler yeah. getting deplatformed. Get Wall Street bets getting deplatformed. You know, now now it's like a going concern for like normal people. Three years ago, no one really, no one cared, other than some cyberpunks and you know tech journalists maybe and, and a few techies. When we started uh, working on meme base, like really no one cared about uh, these issues. And then now it's like it's starting to seem like everyone's caring. So I do think that ultimately COVID was good for Hanjik, which is kind of weird weird to say just because you know we, we all hate COVID. <laughs> Yeah, nobody likes it, but I've talked to some other people. I mean, here in the Gulf Major, we're all these, uh, you know, like e-commerce sellers and online business owners. And yeah, some people made, they said they made more money this last year than in their, their whole life by a, by a, a lot. So yeah, it, it's definitely accelerated a whole online e-commerce world, which is, which is definitely this, this community. All right. Well, what was I going to say? I'm, I'm blinking. Oh, I was going to say, like, I keep getting these alerts from in Facebook. I need to... Cause I don't use Facebook on my phone anymore and I don't use WhatsApp because they keep sending me notices that I need to track my location and send data back to Facebook. And so I got a pop-up on my Facebook that says you need to download the app and prove your location or else you can't publish on your page anymore because you have a lot of fans on your page. If you don't log into the mobile app and turn on location sharing and sh improve your location, you I was like, man, this is literally like, a couple of hours ago, they're like, oh man, it's just unbelievable to me. This, the way the things are going, you know? So that's, yeah. that's true. And, and, and I think, I think the reason why that becomes such an issue is, you know, the, the internet was able to grow for the last 20 years without any sort of regulation or oversight because it was considered a toy, right? By like the world for, for, for the majority of people. And now it's like that toy suddenly becomes like your entire life. And then suddenly the things that are, you know, big within the internet, like Facebook and Twitter and, you know, these other platforms is like, suddenly they actually have a lot of power of your, of your life. And also it's like now they, because they're so big and powerful and important, they are on the hook for a lot of moderation that is going to upset a lot of people. So now it's just like, okay, everyone's living online. The tech platform goes super powerful. They also need to moderate and just take like really unpopular stances. So you just get this really terrible situation where, you know, people are just walking towards decentralized alternatives. They yeah. don't exist yet, right? It's now, it's only in the last really 12 months that has been possible to build up uh, actual viable decentralized alternatives, but it is possible now, especially with Handshake and Skynet, those releasing, it's like, you can actually build like a decentralized Twitter, decentralized Facebook decentralized Reddit. So I think as we start to see that, that's when we really see Handshake growing. It's not, not before that. Like we're going to see some growth before that, but once those types of applications come out, then we're going to see like, you know, people coming in in the millions and it's just going to be an insane amount of growth for the entire space. Yeah. I think I want to add it to the show notes. JP Sears, I think, Awaken with JP. I don't know if you know that comedian or he's, he's, I don't follow him too much, but some reason he's recommended on YouTube because they stalk everything I do, you know, and they showed me a video of him, his apology to Facebook. I'll send you the link. I'll add a notes, but he's like, I'm sorry, Facebook. I didn't mean to say something you didn't like. I apologize for violating your terms of service. And I promise to never say anything you don't like again. He's like, it's just, it's, it's like a 10 minute thing where he's like, it's, but he's like apologizing. And he says, I know that in the United States of America, there's a first amendment, but I know that your terms of service supersede the first amendment of the United States of America. And that I can only say what you let me say. <laughs> and then he closes his Facebook account on the video. Like he goes into B-roll. And then at the end, he's sitting on his bed with his laptop and he's like, confirm, close page, done. And then he's like, close laptop. Uh -huh. 
He's like, goodbye, Facebook. <laughs> like that. Seriously. Yeah, like, yeah. It was an amazing video. I, I'll, I'll add in notes. And, but this is, a, this is the yeah, issue, right? Yeah. It's just the issue, man. Like, yeah, this is a problem. Like they say you can't, this is not true. This, what you are saying is not true. Like we don't let you say false information, but how do they know what it's crazy, right? It's really, but yeah. yeah. And, and there's even examples of like, you know, like actual content from doctors and health officials getting taken down yeah. uh, by YouTube. Yeah. Uh, and not only is that scary, but also for a lot of these creators, right? It's like, if this is how you're making your living and then an algorithm text like some copyright notice that's not even valid in a lot of these cases and then they just like automatically shut down your account and then literally like your your source of living is gone that's just completely unacceptable so yeah. it's, it's scary stuff but also it, it creates the cultural zeitgeist in which ultimately a handshake needs that in yeah. order to succeed is for people to realize the issues with these centralized platforms and want to shift towards the decentralized platforms so it's it's a weird like unfortunate thing that's happening but it's also like the thing that will uh, ultimately make handshake win um, yeah. So it's also a positive in some ways. So another thing is the last couple of episodes of Globe from Asia have not been approved to be published on WeChat. Our, we have a Chinese, we put, put this on Chinese. Oh, right? really? They, you upload the video or even the audio. We, we use all these different platforms, Himalaya. We use the WeChat video. We use, different, you know, they don't, they always, they have, a, I believe it's a human that watches it, you know, cause it's like mm -hmm. uploading and pending for like, time so it's somebody like a bot yeah. or a person but they didn't pr prove uh, jahan's i think it's because nft i they don't it's crypto they don't they ban bitcoin they right. ban it. so it's right, a right. version of that <laughs> and uh, but that's that's also my interest with it in the community at global from asia is we're in cross border we deal with this filtering all the time and the other thing is yeah. of course we've talked about facebook and and google and twitter but also amazon I mean, as an e-commerce seller, the, the most scary thing is your Amazon account gets shut down, you know? And I had a really good friend. He's a South American, I believe from Ecuador. He lives in Thailand, you know, digital nomad, really smart, hardworking guy, father of kids. His Amazon account got shut down in January of this year, 2021. A lawyer sent a copyright violation to Amazon on one picture of one product out of a whole portfolio of products. And... He think he doesn't know. He says maybe it was truly a copyright problem with a picture on the. It was like a handbag and it had a picture of a person. <clears throat> they said that the, you can use a picture. So it's a it's it's a woman that died died in like the 1950s. is famous. I won't say who. So it's mm -hmm. it's it's not copyrighted to use her photo, but that specific photo right. is owned by someone. And then that mm -hmm. lawyer said that photo on that product is copyrighted. So his whole account got mm -hmm. shut down. All his money's locked out. And anybody listening oh, today man. that has an Amazon account knows this is a problem. And, you know, that's yeah. why Europe is trying to regulate Amazon because they just shut you down. They just say, to, you know, they don't even need to really give you a reason. They just shut you down and just mm -hmm. take your money and then maybe send your products back to an address that you give them, you know, something like this. It's just, right, right. so, I mean, that's another issue, you know, honestly, that's what I'm also studying about. There's got to be some more because Amazon has gotten too big, you know? And we don't talk about that much in the handshake community, but I feel like it's a similar one as social media is e-commerce marketplaces. You know, it's really scary to get, you know, like you said, a creator on Facebook or, or, or these platforms, they make their income from that and they get shut down the same with e-commerce, you know, you, it's a web too. So, so this has been a really fascinating conversation. I, I know you're super busy and it's super late. I, and we're actually really happy to have you're going to be doing one of our earlier speeches at HandyCon, which we'll talk about at, where you can talk a little bit more about the vision of, of handshake and, and what you've seen so maybe we'll save some of that insights for that i think today's more about the story of of name base and handshake so you've got some new products coming out i know some is like early stage and i have i'm lucky enough to, to kind of be an early user what are some of the things that are coming in the pipeline that you can see can share with us from from namebase or, or or other other things in the handshake community yeah totally so two of the immediate things that are coming out are namer news which is uh forums at news.namebase.io it's a forum that uses handshake names for login and this is really powerful as a primitive because the, the handshake names it's like a, a separate component from namer news Basically, any website can use handshake names for decentralized authentication. 
Um, and image news is just the first site that supports it. So I would love to get, you know, Handshake Mercenary uh, using yeah, Handshake sure. Login as well. Yeah. You know, not reliant on Numbase at all. Just, just use your Handshake name and you can authenticate. So that's, that's releasing. And then we're also releasing hdns.io, which is a public DNS resolver for Handshake. This is actually something that we, funny, sorry, we thought it was impossible to create because it's really operationally difficult to run a public DNS resolver. You need to run it 24 seven. It needs to be replicated all across the globe for it to be speed performant. And you also need to fend off a ton of different DNS based attacks. So it's just like really, really difficult to do. Fortunately, some of the community members were also the community members who like built up DNS infrastructure that like millions of consumers are using. And so we were able to partner with them to actually set this up. So if you go to hdns.io, now anyone can go and start on their computer you know, in Brave, in Chrome, in Firefox, in Opera, Safari, they can start using Handshake. You can use it on your computer. You can use it on your phone. Uh, so we're releasing that. And then in, on terms of the name-based product itself, we're also investing really heavily into the registry. You know, I think you mentioned earlier, so Clay Collins has .c through the name-based registry, and it's really cool. That's uh, .c as a TLD is now a uh, top 500 TLD, yeah. even when ranked against uh, ICANN TLDs. So to get that within, you know, basically within the first year of Handshake is super exciting. And what we're doing now is basically really working hard to open up the name-based registry to everyone because there's a big wait list. And we're just operationalizing that so that anyone can go and start listing their TLD, um, start selling the domains. Mike, I know you're an internet marketer. I think that'll be like a yeah, really, I know. really good opportunity for you. So definitely want to get you on board. And, and it's cool because it's like, you don't need that many sales to actually have a really good business, right? right? Like you, know. you only have only a thousand sales, you have a $10,000 per year business because uh, if you do $10 per domain per year, and that's recurring revenue. And so if you have $10,000 per domain per year, the value of your TLD, right? If you just use like a 10 X multiple, it's just like as like a baseline, is a hundred thousand dollars. And you know, there's no tangent TLD that's worth a hundred thousand dollars a day, even though dot C for example, is already worth a hundred thousand dollars. If you, if you value it based on the, the actual revenue that it generates. So I'm really excited about that just because I think not only will it be a, will it be a great monetization potential, but it'll also just increase the value of all the handshake TLDs across the entire ecosystem. So we're going to be investing into that along with the marketplace and the on-ramp, really just improving, you know, just the sources of friction, just removing them across the board. So those are some of the things that we're working on on the roadmap. Yeah. I mean, we'll link, I'm taking some notes and uh, we'll, we'll try our best to make sure we include all this on the show notes. There's a lot of amazing things. I think we talked about Clay Collins before the recording, just to make sure I include that for everybody. Clay Collins, actually, I followed him before uh, Handshake. He he's founded Lead Pages, which he later, I don't know if he's actively still owner or part of. I oh, think. he founded Lead Pages. That's so funny. I didn't realize that. Yeah, he's the founder of Lead Pages. I, I heard him on the Smart Passive Income podcast with Pat Flynn in like 2013 or 14. And I, I was a customer for a while on there, but yeah, he founded lead pages. I, I actually know his co-founder is my friend, um, Simon Payne. And then I didn't even know he was in handshake when I heard about in October, because some of these people were not so high profile. He started to tweet about it more, but yeah, Clay Collins yeah. Uh, is great. And he's, he's a founder of Nomics now and hardcore into crypto. But it's great. He's been really starting to be more high profile about .c and Handshake on his Twitter account. He's a great influencer, a uh, really smart guy. Also, we're lucky to have him also sharing at the HandyCon this later, uh, right when the show goes out. And Drew Rosner will be sharing too. And Drew, he's also been really, really low profile about Handshake, right? I don't know if he's not yeah, he's, he's much at all. <laughs> what was that, sorry? He, he's accumulating. That's why. Yeah, he's buying, right? I even think I said it to you in a director call. Like even me, I have to say, I didn't. You don't want to have too much people going in. You know, it's it's a, it's a tricky one because you want to get adoption, but you also want to try to, you know, like we also got .dot gfa. That was the last one. That was November or this February fourth. That was the last fifth of the fifty-two, the gfa one. It was like one of the top ones on my list. .dot gfa, which we're actually using for the community. We're building out like rose.gfa. We probably won't do that in your registrar program because I just want to do that for members only. We'll get a TL SLD. But mm -hmm. actually, I forgot to tell you, I got a request for a .mastermind SLD literally yesterday. Okay. I don't know if you oh, know. definitely get that into the registry. He yeah, asked for, for sure. he's a, he does, a, he does, he, because I have a form. I built out a site, dot, 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 mastermind.com, D-O-T. And mm -hmm. he filled out the form. 
And I, he's the first, not second one, but the other one was more like a friend. But he says, he, I actually have a question. Why do you want a dot mastermind? Because I said, it's not, it's a premium extension and uh, it's still early stage. Yeah. And he says uh, he wants to use it because he wants to do like a, a small group of musicians or some, some I can't remember. Something oh, about music. no way. I love that. Yeah. Love so that. he called it a form. God, I think, yeah. I'm so sorry for the uh, delay on that. We've been really, because you know, the past like two months of growth, it's just been putting out fires, making sure bids are going through the marketplace and everything is working. But this, this upcoming month, we're really setting up the registry and you're going to be able to start okay. selling the dot mastermind domains. Yeah, um, I mean, I'm really excited for that. I think that would be a good TLD. I think that that can definitely be like a like a hundred thousand dollar per year TLD. Um, I think so. Just, man. just thinking about. It. I mean, it was like years. one of the top on my on my list, and uh, you can see the bid. But we bid ten thousand H and S on it, and I was scared mm-hmm. did somebody come up above it. But but it's almost. I don't know. You can look yourself. But it was, we only paid two hundred H and S. No, the, yeah. there was a crazy people put these blinds. I don't understand. They put huge blinds, but we were bid. But uh, but yeah, I'm totally excited for that one. But there's so much more that can be done, you know. I mean, I, I, there's of course it can be a domain, but it's also can have you can have, you can have crypto payments. I hope in the future, mm-hmm. maybe not exactly right now, but hopefully there'll be like crypto, maybe even right now. But there there's so much more power. It's like even more powerful of a domain than a, a normal domain once we get fully optimized, because you can yeah you can do so much more with it. I believe than a traditional DNS domain. Once I mean, we're still a little early stage, but it's there's so much power with these. I can't wait till more people get into this. Okay. Yeah, so it was a point. I, yeah, I want to go back and make sure. But yeah, like you guys have been really doing good. I mean, I can imagine how overwhelming. It, you know, I know that some people come. You know, well, let's just put it out there. Some people kind of do complain about name base. I mean, I. I defend you guys. Others do. It's your guys are doing an amazing job and you know, you're like pretty much the only one. It's not because, I mean, anybody can make, try to make it. You guys are doing it, right? You, Anthony and the team and Johnny are doing amazing, amazing stuff. But I mean, yeah, I mean, I think there's just so much growth, right? Like you said, I know we've had some calls. We do. I joined some director calls with you and others. And I mean, it's, what you want to share some of the growth or some of the, you know, there's been some huge scaling, right? I mean, it's, it's unbelievable. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. So just on the, on the one hand, just on the, like the, the bid volume, um, yeah. you know, there've been more and more people bidding on the names. I forget how many was in February, but it's like a few hundred thousand bids. It's like a lot. And the, the handshake wallet infrastructure was not built to handle that kind of scale. So we had to just do a lot of infrastructure upgrades to handle that. And then the marketplace volume, you know, that's been growing 70% month over month for the past seven months now. You know, n- now I think it's probably actually been growing at an even higher rate just because in February we had a monster month of 2.6 million HNS. So that worked out to about, you know, $800,000 in terms of the names being traded. And yeah. honestly, I'll, I'll tell you, I think all the names being sold today, they, they're basically selling at a discount to what they will be in like six months, just after people realize that you can like start selling the SLDs on yeah. them and, and the more use cases that are possible. But still, even even that growth has been amazing, right? It's just like you, you want to see that exponential growth in any sort of new technology. And the fact that the Hanji community has that has it is incredible. And I'm really looking forward to that just growing more and more as the use cases come out. Because if you think about just like word of mouth, it's really hard to explain Handshake just if you're only using words. But if I can just go and you know, go to Sky Include and just go and visit that in your browser or go to Name Reviews yeah. and just log in with your Sky Include name and yeah. you can just like demonstrate what you can actually use with it. And then you can actually go and show someone, on, oh, like I, I can actually go and buy .c domains on 101 domain or in Circo or Gateway. And, and now you just start to, you know, make it really easy for people to go and explain Handshake to their friends. And then that means that the, the ecosystem can grow that much faster, right? If you shorten the explanation time from 30 minutes to three minutes, you're going to have 10x, you know, more than 10x of growth. So I'm really excited. There's going to be a lot of stuff coming. It's, it's definitely a great time to be in the ecosystem. And it's still very early. Too. Yeah, it's totally early. I know the first year and, you know, is passed and there's a little bit of people don't know what that totally means, but there's so much opportunity. And then, you know, some people say, oh, it's getting more expensive now. But like you said, like compare this to an ICANN TLD, which I don't know, I don't want to be like, shooting myself down, but I don't know if I would ever either be able to, or want to be able to afford the cost of a traditional TLD on ICANN. Right. I mean, it's like a million dollars. Yeah. You'd be, you'd be spending millions of dollars and, and then you don't even have the power of the, you know, the crypto kind of powers I would call to it. And I think the last part, 
we should probably add that. I think, I don't know, there's so many clubhouses lately and they're like hours and hours long, but somebody says that we should, yeah, yeah. we should put into it that it's a cash flow investment. It's not, you know, you can, you know, like uh, Clay Collins, he's going to be sharing at the Handycon too. And he's, he's sharing screenshots of income coming from all this TLD or SLD sales, right? It goes directly into his name base account. Yeah. I think it's like 30 or 40 H and S per what is, and of course he can set your own price, but I think he's getting about 30 at, and he's showing same day, he's getting multiple sales coming in. So he, it's like a, yeah. it's a cash flow investment. Like you said earlier, just to reiterate, but you, you invest in this name. If it's of course, dot C is probably one of the obviously better, better ones, but I mean, uh, there's still plenty out there that exist that people will there's register. Tons. I mean, th there, there are infinite niches on the internet, which means that there are going to be infinite TLDs that are good TLDs because you don't, you don't need a million dollar niche like you do in an ICANN space, right? So in ICANN, you need, you need your niche to be at least a million dollars, like at way more than that actually for it to justify the investment. But in Handshake, you can have a niche that only has like a thousand people that are going to pay $10 per year. Now that's a $10,000 per year, you know, cash flow business. That's impossible in the ICANN space. That's very possible in Handshake because, you know, the names don't cost, don't have that same, you know, bureaucratic cost. So if exactly. you just think about like what's possible, it's like I, I, I envision there's going to be thousands of TLDs that are actually very good businesses to own. And they're just going to have their own little niches and, and you know, target markets and people are going to be using them. And it'll be just really, really amazing to see that. Agreed. And then just the last, you know, of course, I'm plugging my, of course, I have this membership. But the idea is I have the, the GFA 3L Global from Asia GFA because these shows are like GFA right of course at Global from Asia is long so I have GFA so I was lucky enough to get the TLD and the idea is you know we could set up a SLD for members rather than just selling it as a domain extension you know you could mm -hmm. have a member and a member gets it's their identification right maybe we could have a forum like using a decentralized Reddit that only people with the dot GFA name could log in and post right and then it mm -hmm. you have a pay a profile page they use this to come we have these events in the future like in the old days we had like a cross-border summit in person maybe we could use this you say i'm rose.gfa right and then you could show it that could be your like entry into an event or a, a, yeah, a totally. workshop or a online or offline like that's your identity in this community right that's it's so much mm -hmm. amazing things so all right. I mean, this has been fascinating. I think we should, I, I could go, I, I mean, it seems like we're obviously you're super passionate. I I'm addicted. It's been like just a, you know, three, four, five months for me. I'm totally addicted too, but I, I see the future and you know, you're super, super smart. There's so many super smart people in this. Right. And there are other, you know, people always say the first thing people say to me is like, Oh Mike, but there's others that have tried to do this. And there's others that are in trying to do this even now, you know, maybe we'll end with that. Like what, why, like you've kind of hinted towards it, but maybe like why? Why are you so down on handshake? And you know what? What's the difference? Yeah, to totally. So the there's a few aspects of this. One is why now, and then two is if why now, why handshake? And the why now question is really important because one is before blockchain technologies, there have been alternative root projects in the past, but they don't provide any. A tangible benefit other than expanding the namespace. So at that point, you don't actually have enough of a draw to that alternative route for it to succeed. And then just within the blockchain namespaces, you know, the main one is, is Namecoin. The name distribution of that was basically not done in a way that would ensure its success. What happened is Namecoin would sell the .bit domains for a set price at as soon as the Namecoin product protocol launched, right? Anyone could go buy any name. And what that created was in an environment where the early domainers, basically early squatters just bought all the good names because they could just buy up, you know, a lot of the Kanji community members actually came in and told me like, oh yeah, like I was early in Namecoin, bought up all the good names. That basically makes it so that the ecosystem can never grow and hit a breakout trajectory because you have this squatter issue that we alluded to uh, or discussed earlier. And then past that, you also just have to look at the ecosystem that Handshake is growing up in now, which is now we have all the D-Web technologies basically maturing at the same time. A Skynet, IPFS, Filecoin, you know, ARWeave, plus Handshake as a naming system, right? Because the naming system, you still need the names to point to something.
something and do something. So just for the traditional internet, like that, that's pointing a handshake name to a traditional website. Like that's internet, that's interesting on its own, but it's really interesting when you pair handshake with these other decentralized web protocols. And at the same time, you know, it's really only within the last 12 months that we see this massive cultural zeitgeist towards decentralization. And you need those two ingredients for something like Handshake, for new technology to succeed. You need the technological maturity and the cultural zeitgeist. It's the same thing with Bitcoin, right? There have been numerous Bitcoin attempts, you know, digital uh, currency attempts in the past, Bit Gold, a decade prior, and they all failed. It wasn't until Bitcoin figured out the right mechanics to you know, actually make the technology work. And then also the 2008 financial crisis. So then Bitcoin launched in the wake of that. That basically created the cultural pull for Bitcoin to succeed. So you need the technology and you need the cultural pull in order for it to find product market fit. So that's, you know, that's really the reason why, why now for Handshake is you have the technology and you have the cultural pull. And then also just if you evaluate the other protocols. So there's, there's no one actually attacking decentralized DNS. There are naming protocols for wallet naming, where, where wallet naming is really their primary focus. But for decentralized DNS, it's actually a really, really hard problem. There's a lot of infrastructure that you need to create. You know, and I, and I can tell you just in creating HDNS.io, there's just like a lot of random things that you need to deal with in terms of the infrastructure to make a protocol usable for DNS. And it has is the only protocol that's actually fully focused on that. There are, there are other protocols that you know have the wallet naming, but you know tacking on DNS as an afterthought is not going to create an actual functional decentralized DNS solution. And, and they're also, you know, if you think about the motivation for Handshake, it's it's decentralizing the root of the domain name system, which is what needs to decentralizing. The rest of the system is actually fairly decentralized already, so it's like it's really attacking the source of the centralization that needs to be decentralized. So that's that's why Handshake. And then if you just look at the growth, regardless of like how you feel about you know, handshake itself, you just look at the growth of the ecosystem. It's like, okay, there's, there's a lot of momentum behind it. So I, that, that I'm very, I'm very bullish on handshake. I'm very excited. Sure. I, I think we're going to continue to see more and more issues with the centralized internet. And as those issues pop up, you know, as we've seen these last few months, as they continue to exacerbate, we're going to see more of a pull towards handshake and handshake is really the best decentralized DNS solution out there. So it's just all that attention is going to fall onto handshake. So it's just going to be, uh, it's going to be a crazy time. Awesome, man. Yeah, I can feel it. I feel it. I'm, I'm on board, man. So I think uh, we'll wrap up with that. You're, you're going to be, we're so lucky to have, you know, we put together this community event, a handycon dot promote and with Jahan, which was talked about on the two podcasts earlier and we're making it happen already this coming week. You're going to be sharing on a panel and also a session. Mm -hmm. And of course people can find, you know, I think you're your company is the first place people go to get in, right? We've talked namebase.io and create mm -hmm. free accounts. Of course, the, the hardest part is, of course, the, getting the, you know, buying the HN, buying HNS, right? I mean, we're buying, getting yeah, into yeah. We're going we're gonna to make that easier for sure. Like the de debit card payments and wires are, are on the way. Awesome. That'll be a huge one. Okay. Any, any last things? I think it's been, I think I can't even, I lost track of time. I think this is longer than usual, but it was a fascinating conversation and I really, really appreciate you sharing with us today. Yeah, totally. I would say just fi final part of your thought is a lot of people feel FOMO when they join a growing ecosystem that's growing really fast and they see all the other people like, oh man, I'm getting in late. But we're still very, very early, right? Like Bitcoin is still early. Like I, I think Bitcoin is, is still going to keep on going up. I have a lot of conviction around Bitcoin. Bitcoin is still early and that's 10 years in. Hendrix only one year in. We're still super early into everything. So if you're just considering jumping in, just, just jump in now. You know, you're, you're still very, very early. And that, that's just what I would say is it's really easy to feel FOMO, but you're not too late. It's, it's incredibly early. And, and now is the best time to kind of enter the space. Yeah, I would agree. And I guess my last point on that is... There's people, they, they got in earlier maybe than somebody that's just getting in now, but they're still like underselling their names, you know, even the, after, of course, there's some that are like crazy high squatter price millions maybe, but there are some, I've bought a lot on the aftermarket and I look, I know they, they got it for like five, you know, or 10, they got lucky or they were really early. They bought the name, but you can still buy it so cheap. And then compare, at least I believe so cheap. And then you, you compared even 10,000, a hundred thousand HNS, which Sounds like a lot, but compare if it's a real TLD that can make cash flow. And like you said, you can, when the registrar program is open, I mean, when people start to realize that you can actually buy this TLD and make a thousand, two thousand, ten thousand, a hundred thousand a year with this name, then people are going to be like, 
man, I wish I got in now, right? It's the same with like Bitcoin. Yeah. Like you said, even now it like probably will say in a few years, like 50,000 Bitcoin is so cheap. It's like 500,000, right? Or whatever it will be in the future. You know, I mean, that is a hard part though. People feel like they're late, you know, with crypto or, or any kind of project. But, you know, I think, mm-hmm. of course, I have to say like, of course, don't invest your house or your mortgage. But yeah, I mean, people should try to get some exposure to projects that they they believe in and, and uh, are willing to invest in the long term. But okay, I'm really, I'm really happy again. This has been awesome. And I'll see you at the conference, handycon.promote. Awesome. All right. Thanks, Mike. Thanks, Yashan. You know, we had him on the show recently, Mercury.com. They support our show. They're a GFA partner. They're a, they sign up for our package. They support what we do here. And they are aligned with what we are. They're a company that helps make banking in the U.S. easy without needing to go there for businesses, for e-commerce sellers. They have a special little bonus for you and me. If you sign up with our link at globalfromasia.com slash Mercury, but there's like a totally totally no brainer if you do business in the u.s and you either even have a bank account this is why not get a second one but a lot of you don't have one so why not check it out if you want to read the review and i made a little video myself globalfamesia.com slash reviews slash mercury you can see that as well thank you mercury for supporting us and thank you for creating services for people around the world trying to do business online and do do business and e-commerce to earn money for their life, for themselves, for their family, for their friends, for their legacy. Check them out. Thank you so much. Thank you, Tishon. That was fascinating. I know, and he, this guy is a hard worker. I, I mean, I don't think they sleep there. Him, Johnny Wu, I talked to quite a bit too, and the community manager at Namebase. I mean, I feel like when when did they sleep? You know, I'm over here in, in China on the other side of the world. He's, they, 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 they never seem to sleep. So do amazing things. Thanks for what you do. You can check out the show notes. We put a full transcript to at globalfromasia.com slash namebase. And we're trying to put this into the D web. We have .gfa. We're looking at home.gfa. I don't know if it'll be ready right now. Manly on the team, our IT department, our uh, amazing web managers helping get this ported into Handshake and the decentralized internet where you don't have to be as afraid that your site will get taken away, hosting, you know, things like that. So stay tuned. We're working on that. And a lot of times my problem is I'm sometimes too early. I'm too early, you know. I sold Bitcoin, $1,000 a coin in 2000 and I can't remember, 16 or something. But, you know, a lot of us are too early. You know, we got to hodl. We got to hodl. You got to get in. You don't get the FOMO. You got to think long term. And, uh, you know, Maybe, maybe, maybe it doesn't work. You know, Tiashan's a really smart dude, as you could tell. You know, I'm somewhat smart. <laughs> or moving to China, was that right? <laughs> or, you know, I'm a pioneer with arrows in my back, you know, going to the battlegrounds, trying to be early on everything. But I, I believe in it and I'm getting people around me convinced. And thanks, Chris Moore. I appreciate you listening. You got me into this. Hats off. I'm wearing a handshake hat here. We got our HandyCon conference. Just a couple of days after the show goes live, handycon.promote, promote TLD. Might not work for you or handycon.org for those that don't haven't converted to the resistance. I don't want to say dark side. We're the good side. But I'm just tired of being afraid. You know, I, I don't want to admit it, but I'm afraid. And I know a lot of other Amazon sellers, e-commerce marketers, internet marketers. We're afraid of getting an email. I've gotten these emails. I've got my friends gotten these emails. Dear seller, dear associates partner dear adsense publisher dear facebook page owner dear it's not dear man don't say dear i feel like they all say dear they're not dear dear means you care they do not care man they don't care you are just a sheep in their farm you know it's just another widget just another lab rat in their market in their ecosystem they just toss you away and let somebody else come up in your spot i'm tired of getting those scary emails your account's been terminated your account's been frozen your page has been unpublished you know i'm just tired of this man i don't think i'm a shady marketer i don't think i am but i i do a lot of web marketing i have a lot of friends and I'm just tired of all these stories. I mentioned some of them, but I'm just tired of these stories. 
you check the box when you sign up for Facebook. You check the box when you signed up for Amazon Seller Central. You check the box. You check the box. That means you accept our terms of service. That means that you live in our world and you have no power and we can do anything we want to you and we can throw you in the garbage when we want to. We can delete your content, delete your products, delete your store. We can do anything we want to you for any reason and we don't need to tell you why and you can't. You usually can't even get an answer. Or you can pay an Amazon seller lawyer $10,000 to write us a letter. You know, I don't want to pay $10,000 to a lawyer to talk to you, Amazon. I don't want to pay $10,000 to talk, fight for my AdSense account back, to fight to fight for my account back, you know, and my WeChat account. I don't I'm afraid, man. I am scared, man. I am scared. My WeChat account will just get locked. You know, I won't be able to log in one day to say your password doesn't work. That's what they do to you, man. That's even worse, right? You're like, "My password works." failed logging my face is still on my Facebook. people are messaging me still there they think i'm there why are you not responding mike i sent you a message did you get my message did you get my message you know i don't want that fear that my account is shut down man i don't know maybe i'm an extreme case but i am a hyper user of the internet and that's why i stop really caring about social media because i'm just too paranoid scared man i am too scared I have no power, I have no authority, I have no control over those walled garden platforms that can do anything they want to me for any reason and no recourse to them. I spend so much time building content. That's why I like websites, that's why I like blogs, that's why I got mikesblog.com, globalfromasia.com, that's why I don't really like to push traffic to Facebook, I don't like to push traffic to these third party platforms that I have no control over. That's why I do internet marketing and I drive that traffic to my Amazon listings and I boost up my Amazon listing from my website because at least then I can change the link if they delete my product or lock me out of my account, at least I can update my page. But I mean, it hasn't happened to me. I have had domains taken away from me. I have gotten GoDaddy taking domains away from me. I don't know. You know, I've been doing this too long. I'm an old man. I'm an old man. You know, I'm going to be 40 years old in April. April 2nd, 1981. Don't do, don't do some kind of identity theft on me. But I'm going to be 40 years old in just a couple of weeks. You know, do I want my kids to grow up in this world of fear? To grow up in this world where the new governments of Facebook and the new government of Google and the new government of Amazon can tell them if they can make a living or not. That if they can continue to earn their income, you know, I don't want to embarrass my friends, but I told you in the interview with Taishan, like my friend, he's in Chiang Mai. Earned some money selling Amazon. His whole account shut down because there was a picture on one of his products that was copyrighted because some kind of, I think they use these bots or something that scrapes all these images on Facebook looking for copyright images. I mean, maybe he made a mistake. Maybe, or maybe even purposely did. Or maybe, maybe the freelancer he worked with didn't, didn't check into it enough. But to close your whole account, man. I mean, he had more like 10 or 15, 20, 30 products. It was one product. You know, I understand, you know, there is some issues of copyright infringement, but I feel like it's gone the other way sometimes. And this is why I'm in love with Handshake. This is why it's been consuming my mind. I mean, it does take you over. The auctions get a little bit crazy. I'll be honest, you know. But the core fundamental of Handshake is you own your name and you own your content. That's the fundamental. There's some real extremists in the community, more than me, and they won't even use Clubhouse, man. They won't even use Clubhouse. We have this event, HandyCon. They won't even use Clubhouse because they're like, it's too centralized. You know, I, I don't want to have my profile there. I don't want, they don't even, won't even log in, won't even create an account. And I'm getting like this. I'm getting to be old. Facebook, I, I don't want to log in anymore. I don't. It, it stalks my browser, it tracks all the websites, it serves ads to me, you know, it locks me out, it punishes me, it do, you know, it makes me send all my, I sent, I, 10 years ago, I was like, get people to like your Facebook page, send traffic to Facebook, and then you'll boost your page, but then you know what? If you don't pay their advertising, nobody sees it. The likes don't mean nothing anymore. Maybe they look cool, 
but you got to pay money to Facebook. Mark Zuckerberg needs that money, man. He needs that money in his pockets. He needs that money. If you don't pay, you don't play. I mean, I'm tired of these platforms doing that to me. And then they just shut you down, throw you in the garbage. You know, that's why I don't want to spend money boosting fake global from Asia posts. You know, it's like unbelievable. So if any of this sounds a little bit interesting, you can own your own name, own your identity and own your content on the internet. And I call it the new internet. T.S. says I should say it's the decentralized internet. It's the D-Web. If any of this sounds interesting, you should join the handycon.promote or handycon dot org it's only in a few days so it's super short notice it was literally born from two podcasts ago with jahan and we're making it happen so we're at one gigabyte <clears throat> my internet's so slow in china because they control me here like like they got my the hand on my throat so it's gonna take hours to upload this and it's a last minute show so i'm gonna kind of cut my blah 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 session here but let's make the internet great again, man. I, I kind of miss the old bulletin boards. I miss the old internet. You know, I'm tired of this, like, bland, highly regulated, boring internet where I can put my profile photo and change the text on my page. It's so boring, man. Let's make a real creative internet again. I hope to see you on a new, on the new world. Globalformation.com slash namebase. Third part of a three-part series, but it's a core part of what we do at Global From Asia and a fundamental point. And that's why we're supporting this. Thank you. To get more info about running an international business, please visit our website at www.globalfromasia.com. That's www.globalfromasia.com. Also, be sure to subscribe to our iTunes feed. Thanks for tuning in.